right, everybody. So I had a chance to get out. We're gonna go on a half day today, and then we just wait for the boat. So I'm here about just landing about 45 minutes early. Some other places like the Victory and some of the other places you want to be there like an hour early. This one, hour or 45 minutes early is just fine. I mean, you see people walking on like half hour before or not even, you know, just checking in and just like walking on the boat. And you can totally do that too if you want. But this boat, as you're going to see later on, it's a little bit more difficult to put down your bag. They don't have a lot of space for bags and for um, places for your rods and stuff. So, you know, one of the first hot tip I got for you is try to get here just a bit early because you need to figure out where you're going to put your stuff. And that's vital to make your trip um, enjoyable. And getting to all your stuff is kind of a pain when people put their stuff in front of you and you're just in a space. So try to make sure you get your space. I'll show you in a little bit. So when you get down from the landing, the parking lots are on the other side. Just come to the front port. This is where you actually check in. It's so like I said, you park, you check in, you get all your stuff, like your bag number and your ticket to ride. Your ticket, of course, you want to bring your license. And if you need to rent rods and everything, everything happens in that shop. After you go and put your parking pass back onto your car, you're going to come over here to the landing loading area and you're going to stand in line. And really the boat is, well actually it's not there right now, but normally it's just right there. So maybe they moved uh, from where they originally were at. But uh, yeah, and all you do is you just stand here in line, you go across this bridge right here, go down and then normally the boat was right there before. It's the city of Long Beach out of Pierpoint Landing. Before you get going down the there. ramp over there, you come across this uh, area here, you check in here. You're going to need to have your ticket out and your fishing license. Jump on board. Here's all your bags and everything and your rail set up. Live bait and everything is going to be going inside of this area here. One thing to keep in mind is that there's not a whole lot of rod storage on this boat. So it's in the very front and there's some pieces, some areas right here. The thing is that when this boat's moving, a lot of the water from here splashes all into this area here. So you don't want to put your bags, that's another tip right here. Do not put your bags or anything right there. You can go upstairs to go and check out things that are going, and this is the galley. The side of the boat looks just like this. The side of the boat looks just like this. Bags, everything can be here. Let's go to the front. This is all, of course, seating. And then you have your storage room main galley, kind of just like hangout area. They closed this off at one point, but I think you can still come in here and sit now. More seating, and then you have your rod storage here. This is where I prefer to hold my rods, right there. And then you also can put your, uh, your tackle boxes in the front here as well. Main air in the front. Go along the side again, and more of the same. And these are your restrooms on the side here in the front of the boat. Now going up to the top of the city of Long Beach is cool and all for kids, kind of hanging out and just kind of taking in the sun up top there, but you do feel the waves a little bit more, so it does get you a little bit more more shaking there, so not the greatest. Oh, lunch and dinner stuff for the uh, burgers and drinks and everything, and then here's the stairs up to the top. Um, I really do not recommend anybody putting your uh, tackle boxes up here. Many chances is really mostly for seating and you see a lot of people get sick up here. So <laughs> so this area right here is really nice because it's shaded. So after my son is done, you know, as we're coming back in, this is the area you kind of want to be at because it's shaded from most of the uh, wind and everything went on. So this is the second floor. It's nice because it's, you know, there's seating areas here and you can kind of look out. But again, when the boat's shaking, you'll feel it a lot up here. I'll show you down here at the very bottom. Everybody's checking in. The first thing you do is you get in here and then you turn in your gunny sacks. If you have a gunny sack, you rent them for three bucks. And then they also ask you if you want to do a jackpot, which ranges on the boat. So it just depends on which boat you're going on and how much jackpot is. Of course, the heaviest fish is going to win that. And then you just memorize your bag number so that when they ask you if you catch something later on, you can always just tell them where to go. It's pretty simple to use. If this lock is unlocked and the door is not opening, obviously somebody's in there, so you just want to make sure to see that lock. Just go in there pretty much just a simple toilet, sink. Lock it when you're done so that the door doesn't flap around. That's kind of a, a noob thing is to come out of the restroom and not lock it, and then this door just rattles and bangs along the boat. Um, the crew is always willing to help, especially when it's uh, a good time. You don't want to 
try to get them when the bite's on and, and a bunch of people are around the place because there's only so many of them that can go around and talk to people and help out. So just try to hit them up when they're less busy. Just be conscious of that. Like that guy over there is always going to be checking in. Now's the wrong time for him to be asking asking him to help set up your rig, right? But he's available, so he can help set up a rig. So if you do rent rods or if you're not sure what to do, always ask the crew because they're always willing to, uh, to help you out. They actually want to put you on fish so you come back again real quick. This is a standard rockfish rig for me. I'm using a California Tri Helix. It's actually a 25 to 60. It's 809H. The reason why is for rockfish, sometimes you're hanging some pretty heavy weight between 12 ounces and 16 ounces, and you want to have a little heavier line rating on the uh, on the rod to um, to be able to not just have a full bend of the rod when you have just your weight on there. It's kind of, uh, you, you get a lot less feeling. So you want the rod to be able to sustain the weight. Also, with a rod like the Trihelix, because it's made with uh, fiberglass and graphite, it actually helps you feel a little bit more on the edge. I love this rod. It's just simply what I uh, always use in every uh, every uh, outing I go on. I'm now using an Avid LX, um, the six to one ratio, and the reason why is because it's 46 inches per turn. Helps me get the fish in pretty quick. This is a brand new kind of um, trial for me, but I'm giving it a, you know a go today. Basically, what I do is I set up my double dropper loops at home. With a swivel and then I can just go anywhere on the boat tie it on there and I'm ready to go you'll see here I've got my circle hooks just wrapped around the rod it's pretty simple I'll just wrap around that way it keeps it from moving around and flying about when people are walking by they don't catch themselves and then what you want to do is you also want to take your sinker and just wrap it around the handle so that everything is nice and compact and you don't have everything bouncing around the place so this is a pretty um, standard way to set up your rod and get it ready for fishing um, like I said, I come to the front of the boat, so it's a little bit less people here, and that way you can just kind of do what you need to do and, and move along. Like I said, just uh, hanging on there on the on the line there, like this and this. So this is the most important thing. This this uh, sinker. Don't just leave your sinker floating around. It's uh it's terrible for the for the boat. It just knocks everything around and hurts your reel and rod and everything. So sorry, I forgot to show the swivel. I swivel everything at home. The reason why I swivel for rockfish is that when it's coming up. Rockfish are spinning around as they're coming up, especially when you're reeling in at 46 inches a turn. So sometimes you can actually um, lose the fish because they're spinning around as they're coming up. So you want to put a swivel on there to keep, prevent that. Also, uh, just as just let you know, I'll show you guys how to do a double drop a little bit later on. But um, the knots I'm using here is San Diego Jam, and it's pretty simple. Just go right to braid directly to uh, mono or floral if you want to use it. And then from that point, what you do is just kind of hang out as they. Uh, get to the area you're gonna fish you can see the deck hands here are starting to cut bait they provide you bait on the boat so you don't need to bring your own they've got the squid and they've got some live fish sometimes every once in a while they have a live on a half day boat they don't always have live bait but on three quarter and full days they, they're always gonna have it so they have squid going on here so he'll be taking care of that meanwhile the other deck hand will be walking around asking if everybody's okay if they have the rig set up making sure that they're set up properly, the right weight, the right hooks, all that kind of stuff. Again, you know, these deckhands and everybody, they want you to catch fish. The more you catch, the better they feed, the better they get paid, you know, because if you have your fish cleaned, they'll take care of that for you. And the better time you're going to have, you're going to come back again. So they want you to catch the fish, make sure you're in the limits. So they go over the limits. There's the other deckhand here. Earlier about not putting your stuff here. You can see as we're moving along, all the water is coming out of this uh, bait tank here. What's happening is sloshing around along the side and gets all this stuff on the side of here wet. So if you have an open container, if you have like a backpack or something, it's going to get splashed on and wet. And if it's even rougher water, it splashes against all your reels and everything. It's all water all across the place too. So it just, it only hits back here when you're generally coming back in, but you don't want to put your stuff on these uh, front benches here. So just another tip for you. Up. We did three stops, I think. Everybody is fishing for uh, salmon groupers and bocaccio or uh, red snappers. Caught a limit, caught more than a limit. I uh, gave some away as I tossed some back, little smaller ones. Um, ended up with uh, two more large size sculpin, got a white fish, got some uh, all kinds of different types of rockfish there. Now we're heading into my favorite time of the trip. We're going for sheephead and whitefish, for all you know. I'm always up to that sheephead. This action, I'm using a kind of a bass rod. It's a Cascade Spiral. It's got that acid wrap eyes. It's
it's got the um, this is a heavier version. It's got a one to three ounce capacity and twenty pound rating, and it's being paired up with a Lexa three hundred with a Gobexis power handle. Just thought I'd give this a try and see how it works out. I always uh, love fishing one fifty inch short stuff. If you guys know me at all, you know what's up. Anyways, let's see if we can. I got limits of uh, red snapper, got a salmon grouper in there, white fish, two uh, two sculpin, big sculpin, and. Whoa. Uh, oh, and three uh, sand dabs. I've always wanted to try sand dabs, so I'll be giving that a try. And hearing about how to cook those things, I guess you just take off the head, take off the guts, and just pan fry the whole thing and turn it into like a potato chip. But I do know that everybody that's ever talked about sand dabs is they're amazing and delicious, and that there's a boat at uh, Birth 55 next to the Victory RM that goes out there and specializes in sand dabs. And the weird thing about them is that you can catch like 10 at a time. They have these big long stringers. You can just catch a bunch of them at a time. So it's definitely a thing over here. And people are always chasing those things. So I've got three of them. I'm interested to give it a try. So what happens. So that's a wrap. We are heading into the port right now. It is about, uh, I don't know, 2.45 or so. Um, overall, great day for rockfish. I think I did it. I struck out with the sheephead whitefish stuff, but it is what it is. I just don't think very many were biting. I did catch like two in the rockfish area, which was weird, but um, so let's go over kind of the stops. The first stop was pretty deep. It was probably like 370 feet or so. Fishing down below, we kept catching red snappers and boccaccio, kind of that kind of stuff. And uh, there's a limit on those things, only four per person. So we were very careful not to over, uh, you know, exceed the limit. Um, that was going on. Then we, once it stopped and we got off the track, we went to another location. We did that three times total. Basically what's going on is the current is super, super strong here today. So the boat was really rocking. Several people got sick, but uh, and those waves were kind of moving around the boat a lot. But overall, the fishing was pretty good. I was actually pretty impressed. Um, when we started to come inshore and really kind of focus on the, the white fish, I wasn't doing so well. Um, so I think that my rod combination, everything was okay, but I just didn't just wasn't lucky some people around me were catching some whitefish here and there but it wasn't a constant bite it wasn't that much fun so I don't think I missed out on a whole lot but overall half day you can't beat it heading home now I uh, got myself quite a few fish I'll, I'll put up pictures and uh, you can see the, the catch was for the day so hopefully you enjoyed it and it was informative gave you some idea about what the city of Long Beach boat is on a pier point landing half day I think it's like 60 it's like 65 bucks Plus you pay a couple fees, so it's like $69 total just to do an online booking. And then you pay $3 more for parking. And then if you don't bring a bag, you gotta buy a gunny sack for I think two or three dollars. And then <laughs> if you wanna participate in the jackpot, it's like five or ten dollars. I don't know what it was. I don't do that jackpot. So if you have any comments or questions or anything you want to talk about for a half day book, go ahead and leave it in the below. And uh, hopefully I'll get to it and we can talk about it. I just want to try to make everything as easy as possible for you to get out and understand kind of what you're headed for, what you're actually signing up for. So half day boat, city of Long Beach. That's it for Alakai. Take care, everybody, and see you in the next video. Bye.